Um, it's late game content, right? So you'll see at the top right hand corner there's that 50. That means we're level 50. Okay. Uh, that's, that's late in the game. And we're going to come across uh, somebody in need of help. All right. So we're, we're, we're definitely, you know, a mercenary who's maybe feeling themselves a little bit at this point. We're, we're pretty strong, right? Oh, yeah. We're, we're doing good. Uh, we've got the Adresia, our boat. Okay. Um, and it should be pretty decked out at this point. And uh, as well as our gear, if you look, uh, he's uh, looking pretty regal there. Oh, yeah. So you're definitely not starting off looking this way, right? No, you basically start off with a pair of sandals and your underwear. And okay. then, you know, hopefully, uh, you get better from there. Yeah, I think uh, that's one of the coolest things, too, that uh, I've seen about Odyssey is that you're, as you level up, your your outfit is going to change, but it's not just cosmetic this time, right? Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. We have an entire progression system built around, you know, picking up new gear, uh, dismantling it, engraving it, so you can upgrade uh, your gear to make it uh, for, for bonuses like damage, uh, extra damage, or uh, being uh, impervious to certain other types of damage. And so you'll customize your arms, your chest, your legs, and your helmet with you know, stuff you'll find on the battlefield, stuff you'll find at the end of a quest line. We have entire like uh, setups that are like, you have to have all five pieces in order to be able to uh, unlock these bonuses. It's, I mean, the possibilities are endless. They're the permutations in terms of how many different kinds of looks you could have is ridiculous. Yeah, and I mean, it just adds another you know, hook to keep us playing in the end. There's now a loot grind in this. Yeah, there's, a, there's always a little bit something, a little bit more that you could go get. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Uh, so we're jumping in. We're, we see this mob going on here. Um, what's happening? Is sure, that? you can see that in the back there you have that quest giver icon. So this person probably needs a little bit of help, but they're in trouble. So you kind of want to interact with them in order to get their story before doing anything drastic. Let's yeah. Snake, what's going on? We will bring this evil creature to justice. They're lost in paranoia. They think I sacrificed my Ligia to the creature in the forest. Hold your fourth tongue. This walking curse is in league with the writhing dread. She just looks scared to me. Please, the creature took Ligia. If I die here, who will save her? I'll save Ligia and kill any creature that tries to stop me. What are you saying? She will lead you to the petrified temple and your doom. So we're, sh we're getting a, a preview here of all the dialogue options yeah, available. Yeah, those, we have a bunch of dialogue options sometimes that are just about getting more information. You know, you want to get to know somebody. You want to find out well, what their motivations are. You want to find out where are they going to take me. All, you know, all sorts of like normal curiosity questions you would ask somebody you're trying to help out. Yeah. And, uh, th you know, they're not, they're not always like uh, catastrophic choices where somebody lives and somebody dies. You, you want to have that range, right? I love that, too, because, you know, Assassin's Creed has always told such awesome, rich stories and presented so many cool, unique characters. It's nice to be able to inquire more about them if I want to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, at, like, I'm a quest director at, at, at UB Quebec, mm. and building these stories uh, that revolve around characters and the kind of troubles they have and how their daily existence uh, affects the, the, their, their lives, basically, and how they could need the help of a, a mercenary is something that was uh, super interesting to us. It's just like, what is that nitty-gritty of that person's reality? Yeah. So we, we saw that, that cinematic, that, there, that, that conversation scene. Uh, we've now jumped into some combat because it looked like these soldiers were going to execute a helpless woman. Yeah, exactly. So you're going to interrupt them from doing something very nasty and uh, help the lady at the same time. Yeah. So we just saw an amazing ability. Can you tell us a little bit more so about that? Abilities are something that we've really uh, put a lot of work into. We want players to be able to customize their experience and we want them, when they fight, to be able to be aggressive. So we have an entire tree of, ability, of abilities that you can unlock that will give you different kind of powers during combat. So you can have more passive things like uh, increased health, but you could also have a lot more aggressive abilities like uh, the Spart everybody's seen the Sparta kick at this oh, point, yeah. right? So, so satisfying. Amazing. I know, it's so <laughs> cool. It never gets old. <laughs> um, there's the shield break is great as well. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, stuff you can invest your, your ability points in that'll give you bonuses uh, across the board. So we've dispatched of the soldiers. Yeah, so she can talk. Basically, her lover is in trouble right now. Yeah, we, they te we, you know, we tease a little something that we know there's a creature in the forest, something called the, the Writhing Dread. The Writhing Dread, yeah. But it's a price worth paying. I polished Charon's drachmi long ago, Mistyos. I'm ready. You know, I don't want to call you, you. Forever. It's. A, I, I love these Greece. little moments where you kind of like, hey, I don't even know your name. Yeah. Tell me your name. And it, uh, I just killed a whole bunch of soldiers for you. <laughs> what's, what's yeah. Introduce yourself. 
Then let's not disappoint her. Where was she taken? I love Alexios' voice too. He's good at voice acting. The the actress who does Cassandra does an taken excellent back. job oh, as well. They're both amazing. Yeah, we saw that Cassandra trailer. Now we're doing the Alexios gameplay. Both of them Greek. Oh. Yeah. You know, the thing I'm noticing too, like, I've never been to Greece myself. When I picture it, this isn't necessarily what it looks like. Uh, what type of environmental diversity so does Greece have? It's amazing. Uh, it has snowy mountaintops, like where your feet are sinking into the snow all the way down to like that, that tropical paradise type of stuff. Like in, uh, in our E3 demo, what we were showcasing was like, uh, we call them biomes, right? Mm. So the, the palm trees and the beautiful, you know, the, the lush uh, vegetation, that type of thing. And now, uh, for, the, for this demo, we're moving towards uh, what we've called our autumn biome, or uh, it has, it's a deciduous, I, I always have trouble pronouncing it, but it's a type of tree biome, and this is what we're kind of showcasing. So you see the colors have shifted a little bit away from the green, more towards the yellow, the red, that type of thing. Yeah. The horse is obviously back. Uh, this is not Phobos. You just kind of randomly picked him up, but you can call him at any at any point, any time. You and, and Phobos is your own horse. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning of the game, you, there's a moment where you know we'll show you a bunch of horses, and we're like, all right, which one is this? The one you're gonna have for the rest of your playthrough. Ooh. You pick him, and then he'll always come to you. So it's, it's you know similar to you know your eagle, right? Like where you have. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, la la you know, last year we had Senu. This time we have Icarus. Icarus. So Icarus is uh, partnered up with uh, Alexios. We. We do go into it in the story about how okay. that, that works, but we haven't been spoiling it uh, just yet. Yeah. So we follow this woman, Brees, into uh, you know what looks like this village or town that, that looks like it's been through some troubled times. Yeah, she has a little love nest there with her partner, um, but you can, if you look in the background, you can see things are just getting really uh, dark and this gritty. Place is ours. It's and very mine. foreboding. Yeah. A forbidden place for forbidden love. Not much of a love nest. I've seen more romantic funerals. I found scraps <laughs> of her clothes leading to the writhing dreads layer. Please. That's not a direction I would want to go in personally. No, no. I think I would I turn away from something called yeah. the writhing dread. It's funny because there's a little bit further away. There's some. There, you, we're, you're not going to walk into it with your horse, but if you do, there's a point where your horse just nopes out. <laughs> this place is so creepy. I'm not going in there. You know, sometimes animals are smarter than humans. Yeah. <laughs> So we saw there too that you know there's always something worth exploring, worth seeing that you never know oh. where you're going to find some some hidden treasure in this the world. Grid. The world is just filled to the brim. There are I, th I think it's over 600 points of interest. So we call them points of interest. They're places in the world that have a certain gameplay challenge and a gameplay reward. So it may be just taking out a few bandits in order for a couple of bucks, or it could be something like climbing the uh, a statue, getting that reach high point, and uh, being able to fast travel. I mean. There are so many in the world. It's I. Uh, it's really impressive. And y and you're gonna make me clear them all out. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's the kind of player I am. I'm oh, obsessive. I am so OCD about that type <laughs> of stuff. When I play these types of games, I, I am absolutely the same. I have to have everything. I have to have a hundred percent. I have to make sure that uh, I have I have touched and prodded every little thing in the game. Oh yeah, that's that was one of my favorite parts of you know basically every Assassin's Creed, but especially Origins, just going in and clearing out all the map because there's so many awesome little stories hidden throughout the world. That's the thing with the with the points of interest, right? They they've all been modeled around like oh sometimes they're little myths, sometimes they're stories, sometimes they're just like oh what is a like a what is a hairdresser in ancient Greece do mm. type thing. And there's always, there's always that little connection into the world, right? It's not just free gameplay for the sake of gameplay. It's always like, oh, how does this actually tie into ancient Greece? Yeah. So we see here we're wandering into what looks like a you know, fairly desolate place. Yeah, this is uh, the layer of the writhing thread. Yeah. This is all the... Uh, this is a huge collaboration. Like the uh, the actual island of Lesbos is built by um, the a collaboration between the Singapore and the the Chengdu studio from China. What is this place? And you'll see a little it's bit further the gameplay life. that we've we actually built inside this temple home. comes from uh, Romania. And you know we we uh, at the Quebec City <laughs> studio who are who are kind of <laughs> overseeing all this kind of give the directions, make sure that everybody's still going in the right dead. in the right directions. Yeah. It's a huge collaborative effort. Now this is crazy. I mean, this this These basically here gives it away. Yeah, where yeah, we're we going have a where we're headed. Strong tease of where we're going. It destroys all living things. Some very lifelike statues, I'll say that. And leaving them frozen in fear uh, all eternity. 
I love too just the sense of you know even the air is still here, right? That there's it, it, these flecks like the floating, ash yeah, kind of floating in like some Absolutely. things don't live here; they die here. Yes. I had uh, at the at the beginning of this like a couple of years ago when we were talking about Medusa and what did we want to do with them. Please I always wait. had. In my vision of things, I always had this imagine it, this guy would come down from the village into Medusa's lair during the night and grab one of those one of those poor soldiers who was frozen, bring him back in his cart, take him back and say, hey, look what I sculpted <laughs> during the night, and try to get some money. Uh, the ideal never got in the game, but I was... Uh, it, I makes was you think, it makes you think twice about those hyper-realistic sculptures. Yeah, it was, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it was just it was that missed opportunity there. Yeah. We need to get inside. But I see no openings, and the walls are too smooth. So, you know, we were talking a bit earlier. I got a background in architecture, and I got to say, this doesn't really look like she Greek architecture. To me. This, <laughs> this comes out of, I'm going to say, the lore, right? Yeah. Um, just because there is a Every huge part of the Assassin's Creed universe that is uh, unique once. to it, that kind of, kind of sci-fi aspect. Those. Yeah. And I think I've shoes. already said too much. Oh, yes. Uh, this is <laughs> but, you know, we are continuing... Uh, Layla's uh, story in the present mm -hmm. day inside of Odyssey, and this, inside. and I'm not going to tell you how, is tied into Together. that. Ah, okay. So you we won't we won't reveal too much. No. Gift. I we've we've already spoiled so much stuff, but it's great because there's Thank so you. much content in the game that we there's still tons of stuff left. Oh no, spoil. you can't spoil this game. Yeah. There's there's too many possible paths and, and routes you can take. You, know, you mentioned too this is a continuation of Layla's story when we saw her, you know, uh, in Assassin's Creed Origins. The thing I love about this game is that it is simultaneously a prequel and a sequel. Right? That you're, you're continuing Layla's story, it is the but doing it 400 years before. It's the ultimate prequel, right? Yeah. It's a, before even the existence of uh, the Assassins and the Templars as, as, as they've been come to know. And I was talking to somebody on the floor earlier, I was like, well, you have to look at it. It's kind of like uh, the NFL, right? So the NFL exists. It's got all its teams. People play football. But did, did people play football before the NFL? Well, of course they did. Yeah. It just, so it's kind of the same thing. Like philosophies uh, outlast the names of organizations. You know what I mean? I love that. That's a really good, great analogy. Did you see the creature yourself? No. But only the riding dread would be strong enough to take me here. She's too fierce. And too stubborn. You said Ligia knew how to get into the lair. Where exactly is the key? The daughters of Artemis hide their most prized possessions in a So we have this village. idea that, that this creature has taken Ligia, that, ma that she's behind this door and we yeah. need to go save her, but we can't get through it. We have a, see, this, this is one of the, one of the uh, most amazing things for me that happened during production was this, spe this specific key. So you need a disc. Um, I, 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 oh, Stephanie is going to, the historian is going to kill me because I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but it actually exists. It's something that they have in a museum. And it actually predates our story by something like ten or twelve thousand years. Wow. It's this artifact that they found with engravings that they can't decipher, mm -hmm. and we were able to integrate it into the game and pose it as this key to the layer of, uh, I'm gonna say, the writhing dread. Yes. Right? So yeah, we, we we got sort of our setup here that we need the key, and now uh, you know we're back on our ship, the Adrestia. Are we going to find the key? So we're going to a neighboring island, which is just a little bit uh, west of uh, Lesbos, on that small island called Chios, where in theory the key is located. Mm -hmm. The great thing about Chios is that it um, it's populated mostly by what we call a micro faction. So. I'm going to take a couple steps back. We yeah. have the two main factions of the game, right? The Spartans and the Athenians constantly vying for control of territory. But inside, I mean, they aren't the only ones who live here, right? We have other factions that are alive inside our world. We have the Daughters of Artemis that we're going to live, that we're going to meet in just a few moments. They, they are a group of hunters and huntresses who are, are uh, focused on nature. We have the followers of Artemis, these kind of cult-like zealots uh, who are they're quite aggressive and they're very mean. They're, they're fun to kill. We have, um, you know, the cult of Cosmos that we're going to hunt down. Um, their, their soldiers roam the world as well. And, you know, the bandits as well. So the island of uh, Chios that we're going to is really populated by um, these daughters of Artemis who are, happen to also be kind of your gateway to uh, the legendary animals. So mm -hmm. there, are to, there are animals all over the world, but a few of them are special, shall we say. Yeah. So hunting them down and uh, and bringing them back is something that's uh, par another another part of the story, completely optional, I might add, but that you can go ahead and do in the world. Yeah. I think, you know, what 
we're also you know seeing some some ship sailing here. The water is absolutely gorgeous. I, I love know. these zoomed out shots. It's crazy, isn't it? Oh my God, we were, uh, the the team is so proud of what they've accomplished with it. Oh, they should be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, the thing I love about the Daughters of Artemis, too, is that it, it kind of frames that this is a world that's still very much guided by, you know, religion and belief in, yes. in, these, in these deities, Artemis obviously being a, a Greek deity. This period th has people believing um, all, all sorts of, of, of things. Some don't believe in deities at all. Uh, some believe in the, it's, it's, it, the diversity of... Uh, of beliefs is really impressive, and even inside specific uh, like beliefs, they'll have different stories for different deities, and you kind of it's it's actually really difficult to keep track of, <laughs> but it makes it super fun to tie them into the quests. Mm. So you could have you could, you talk to somebody whose personal beliefs are about this particular god, and you can weave a whole story just about him or her and their beliefs and how they affect their lives. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of fun. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of blue sailed ships here. Who are these? So these, the blue cells uh, represent the Athenians. So Chios right now is controlled by uh, Athens, I'm assuming, because usually uh, the blue ships mean that uh, are allowed to swim there, uh, to, sorry, to sail there uh, when you control the nation. But uh, so Spartans have their ships too that, that protect their territories. Yeah. We also, in, on the waters, we also have merchant ships and pirate ships. Uh, you know, if you start shooting on merchant ships, well, then you'll gain the attention of mercenaries mm. uh, who'll come after you and punish you for being a, a very naughty Spartan. Yeah, because obviously in the in this story, you're you're a, a mercenary yourself, but you also can get tracked down by mercenaries. The, the mercenary system is a huge system inside the game, and it's basically law enforcement, right? So you will commit an act, uh, a, a, a bad act, mm. I would have to say that. Like, you kill somebody uh, in front of other people, kill a civilian, maybe steal something. Yeah. You're not going to get desynchronized this time. No, right? you don't get desynchronized. You get People get mad at you. Yeah. They get mad at you, they put money on your head, and they go, oh, all right, this guy just, I don't know, he ransacked, he killed my three goats, and then he ransacked my, 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 my treasure or whatever. So now, uh, so a mercenary inside the world is going to grab that bounty, he's going to come after you. And we actually have a ladder system where these mercenaries exist in the world at all times. They're not just, uh, they, don't, they don't spawn when they need to be spawned. They're, they're always there. And they come, they come hunting after you. So you can either like pay for your bounty, so you can directly pay money to the sponsor. It's kind of like a hush money type thing. Yeah. Or you, know, you can do the head-to-head -head with that mercenary, and sometimes they're going to be pretty powerful. But you know, when they're powerful and the challenge is there, then the rewards are there too. Yeah. And you know, for the first time too, that Killing the people that are coming after you isn't your only option, right? Uh, it's no, not always. The mercenaries make it really tough to talk to them. Okay. There are a lot of instances in the game where, yeah, you can, as opposed to you know taking the violent method. And it, personally, as a gamer, this is what I've always tried to do: is just like, is there a way we can talk this out? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, sure, I'll give you a couple of bucks if maybe we can negotiate, or like maybe I'll help you out. I'll, you know, I'll find something that your daughter needs or whatever, and then we can go our own separate ways yeah. without any bloodshed. That, for me, as a gamer, those are the moments that I like the best. Yeah. So you're coming up. See, this is a hunter's camp right here. Mm -hmm. And the key is hidden in the back. Um, we was just saw it just a few minutes ago. They're all, they're, the, the place is packed. And they're, they're not going to take very kindly to you coming in there and, and stealing their stuff. Yeah. So we just saw there that we, you know, we, we sort of we scouted out with uh, Icarus. Icarus, yeah. And, uh, and now we, we waited until nighttime to attack this camp. Yeah. So it's just, it makes more sense, right, to attack stealthily during the night. Oh, yeah. So meditation allows you to uh, wait uh, half the day and just switch it over. So we have a lot of it. We have an entire ability tree that's dedicated just to being an assassin. So this mm. is where you can put ability points to uh, you know, do more damage when you sneak up behind somebody, or you know when you get to those last tiers of skills, you can actually be you, know, you can purchase like the chameleon skill, which allows you to be invisible for a short time. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that ca that caters specifically to this type of gameplay. Yeah. So yeah, we that just was just an amazing something. ability. I love that one. Yeah. You throw your spear and you just come right up to it and pull it out of the person, and you're moving. You can move through the environment by using this ability. It's amazing. Yeah, that is so cool. And we you know we saw in the lower left hand corner there. Um, you know, what are those? Like are those the abilities we have? So you have so many abilities that you can't use them all at once. You you can only use four at a time. So you map them to the face buttons, mm. and then you can hold left bumper and you hit your face buttons that, depending on which one you want to call. Mm. 
And can we, are, are these able to be used endlessly? How do we, how do you there is, mitigate? You'll see at the bottom of the screen, there's the adrenaline meter. So we were talking about fighting earlier. We, we put the players in a situation where they're, uh, they'll tend to be more aggressive, right? Mm. We give them reasons to attack. That, that those attacks will generate adrenaline and make them u and uh, allow them to spend the adrenaline to use their abilities. So it's like this vicious loop of aggression, where the more I'm aggressive, the more I have adrenaline, the more I use my abilities, the more I'm making adrenaline, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's really that's a, that's what we were going for. Just in terms of the overall feeling of combat for Odyssey, we wanted to make sure that you were just you were the you, you know the instigator. Yeah, there's this the awesome loop of okay, I need to fight so I can build up the adrenaline yeah. so I can use an ability and then sort of you know go back and forth between yeah. your strategies. Yeah, and you get that Sparta kick out. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny too. I, I know that you know the geographic you know topography of of Greece adds a lot of verticality to this game. Yes. Which makes it so satisfying to Spartan kick people off of cliffs. <laughs> I, there are so many places where you can do it, and when you g when you get it just right, I'm telling you, there's no feeling like yeah. it. The first time, it must have been uh, a, a couple of years ago when I when I joined the team, and I finally got to start playing around with this, and I got my first Spartan kick right off a cliff. It, it's so you you'll scream out loud. Oh, yeah. It's insane. Uh, so we've acquired the key, yeah. and uh, we're now returning to Brees in this petrified forest. Exactly, and we're gonna open that door and find out what's hiding behind it. But she can't forget that Brees is there because the love of her life is in trouble. Oh, yes. Not exactly. The mercenary carried this spear, which she claims killed the Rhino girl. No, no, the creature took it here. So we only really, we, we saw one path of getting into this temple, you know, going to the Dars of Artemis and acquiring this key, but, uh, that's not the only way that we could have gone about this quest, right? Um, I think, well, to pick up the, the, uh, the disc, you had to go through, uh, the camp. Okay, yeah. you have to go through, but, yeah. but uh, I know there's, a, there's an option to talk to someone maybe who, who claims to have I, defeated I, you know the I didn't, pl I didn't play it that way. Oh, really? I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I've always played it that way. No, so, that's so funny. No, it's great because I, I played it both ways. I wanted to investigate. How did you play it? So I, you know, you're presented this option of, of, hey, there's this mercenary who claims to have killed the Writhing Dread. Go talk to him. See, see what, what right. how he did it. What you know, what, what's going on? If he really killed it, why is it still taking people? Uh, and so you go talk to him. You, you. Yeah, I don't want to spoil what happens, but uh, it's one way to go about it. And then uh, if you if you want to do both, you can still you know you can talk to him. You can go to the daughters of Artemis. You can do it in any order you want to. I, I see. I'm gonna need that second playthrough because exactly. in, just in terms of quests in the game, I think we we went past 300. Wow. There are three like, and there's so much content. I, it, I'd be lying if I told you that I was able to play every version of every quest that's in the game. I, I, there aren't enough hours in the day. Yeah, this is just one of those you know quests, and we already see how much variability it yep, has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're inside of this petrified temple now, finally. Oh yeah, that's creepy stuff. Oh yeah, gosh, I see why the horse doesn't want to come in. Uh, the flo the floating Bruce, ash gets me every no time. It's just the. Oh yes, yeah. I mean it. it yeah, we, we were speaking about environmental diversity before. This feels like unlike anything okay. that, that we've seen thus this far. This is not something that we're going to be reusing anywhere else. I mean, this is really unique to this portion of the game. Um, it's not, it's all handcrafted, it's all custom made. Um, and the funny thing is, it's, it's optional. You don't even have to do this. It's end game content, and uh, it's not recycled. It, it's all unique stuff. There are just there's no game over to this game. It's just, oh, yeah. It just keeps going. It just always keeps going. And this is something that yeah, you could do even after you finished a main campaign. Oh yeah. Or, yeah. Oh yeah. You can you can uh, jump into this quest line at any time you want, well, given that you have the right level. Mm. But uh, there she is. Oh, here we go. There she is. So. Writhing dread. If you hadn't figured it out yet, it's Medusa. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it always have to be snakes, right? <laughs> That's a great. Game. Boy, Oof. that's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> yeah, the entire so the entire fight with Medusa was built by the Bucharest studio. Wow, shout out to yeah. Ubisoft Bucharest. Yeah, absolutely, they did a fantastic job. So, what 
walk us through this fight a little bit. What, what sort of abilities does Medusa have? It looks like she's trying to stare her gaze down yeah. at us. So she can. She has the classic gaze, right? Uh, if you stay in it too long, you'll turn. You can see the the character slowing down right now. Mm. She also has the ability to call the souls that she's already. It, one of the funny things is you'll see that when she does call the uh, the additional souls, they all have names. Right? Oh, right. These are all like soldiers that came into her lair and were and were. I was gonna say eaten up, but we're we're like. Uh, destroyed by her, but they still carry their names when they come attack you, uh, playing her bidding. Yeah, and she has these great area of effects that you have to dodge out of the way as well. Yeah. And then find that one opportunity when she gives you uh, that opening. So here we're using a, a, an adrenaline attack, is that it? Or what, what is this exactly? That's probably uh, just additional damage. Hmm. Yeah, she's not going to let you do that for long. You see, I mean, she's. We've put quite a few hits on her already, and she's still got yeah, she's quite tough. a bit of health left. Yeah, yeah. She's one of the absolutely one of the toughest fights in the game. Uh, like it, it, it is, and and content. And yeah. We don't want to. We don't want this to be easy anyway, right? No, you're not doing this as a as a level one Spartan no, mercenary, in, you know, in sandals and rags. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, Lay down some good damage there. She teleports away. So yeah, calling you get those soldiers. See, those are the ones. See, they all have their their own names. Oh gosh, <laughs> I thought that was a great touch. Stephanos, the builder. Yeah. Oh my God. So yeah, you got to. Always on the verge of turning to stone there. I, I gotta say that looks like a very useful ability though. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and he's got it tuned uh, ray up high. Because each of the abilities that we have has different levels that you can keep investing in, keep making sure that you know it gets more and more and keep damage more and more powerful. He is clearly uh, maxed out. Yeah, so not only can you unlock the ability, you can level it up. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And these abilities all come from yeah you know, one of the weapons he's got, right? Which is the no, the abilities are independent from the weapons, but the weapons will give you uh, the opportunities to engrave them and do additional damage as mm. well. Okay. So depending on whatever, if you want to use a sword, a dagger, a heavy weapon, a blunt weapon, whatever, the, all of those can be upgraded and they can be engraved. So like if you want to do fire damage with your giant hammer, mm. then you can do that and you can focus on on, on, on getting that type of damage. You well, go to so we just saw it there again. Uh, you know he's. Uh, Alexios holds up a spear, right? What, what, what spear is that? So the spear is uh, a connection to the first civilization. It is the spear of Leonidas. Okay. It was, it belonged to his grandfather who fought uh, the Battle of Creon. I'm not going to say any more about that. Okay. Um, and it is now in your possession. And it, uh, it does give him uh, combat powers that uh, a normal man might not have. Mm, okay. That's how you get those, those area of effect. Yeah, back. exactly. The area of effect, the... the the spear is the key to everything. There, you can, uh, depending on if you go on, uh, if you fall into the cultist hunting. So we have an entire organization of conspiracy theorists that you can hunt down, and they each carry uh, a little shard that you can accumulate and then bring to a forge and upgrade the actual spear itself, so it does Ooh. more damage and it does, uh, and it's just more powerful. Very cool. Yep. We're getting to the end of this fight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like. Ooh. Ooh, that's going to look painful. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> oh, so we just, uh, it looks like Alexios just used uh, another ability to heal himself up a little bit. Oh, yeah, that one, they, it becomes essential when, when you're doing high damage stuff like this. He, the, the player is actually doing a, wow, a really good job. That yeah. combo was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it gives you a little bit of a second win in, oh, a, in, yeah. a, in a tough fight like this. One more hit, and she's gone. Yeah, we, as we've been watching this too, I've just like appreciating how much you have to navigate the space while you're fighting off these these stone soldiers attacking you while using the columns to avoid her gaze. Yeah, they're the, you know they're staples of Assassin's Creed. You can't do just fight. You can't do just navigation. It's always better when you can mix everything up together. So yeah, yeah we did it. The throwing as many challenges as you can to the player is always the best. And here's kind of, I was surprised that we actually made this public, but <laughs> I, I, I really was. It's the type of stuff we keep secret for people uh, that they can discover on their own. But if you know the lore, if you know the license, that ah, is something yes. special. So, uh, yeah, as always, you know, Assassin's Creed's got some, some pieces of Eden yeah, in the background. Yeah, we, we're not neglecting that. Yeah, the spear is not the only thing. Which you know helps explain a little bit of the, these mythological figures and beings. Absolutely, you know everything that we do has to be based 
in a rational world. Mm. It has to be based, it has to be, it makes sense inside of the lore of the universe that we build. We don't just throw around stuff because it's cool, yeah. it has to make sense. So yeah, the mythical creature. Yes, that's Medusa. And no, you can't romance her. She's a little too focused on growing her statue collection, and she thinks you'd be a perfect addition. Good thing you're the baddest fighter in all of Greece by the time you meet her, because who wants to end their odyssey encased in stone? Come on, walk it off, because that's just the start of what she can do. She'll keep you guessing by zipping around her lair at superhuman speeds, tripping you up with energy blasts from the sky, and summoning stone warriors while protected by a force field. And if that doesn't work, she's also real good at just stabbing you. Medusa and her monstrous ilk aren't something you'll just stumble into like a bear in a cave. These fights are reserved for high-level players, and they go far beyond what you'll face while wandering the countryside or sailing the Mediterranean. Finding them takes more legwork than just tracking down a creature's lair and putting a spear through its face, and you'll probably have to go through some misguided human foes before you even get there. For example, in Medusa's case, the quest begins in Erosos, a little village on the island of Lesbos, where an angry mob is getting ready to push a woman off a cliff. The villagers are convinced the woman, whose name is Brees, sacrificed her lover, Ligia, to something called the Writhing Dread. The mob wants an execution, not justice, so right away we're showing them who's boss by kicking a few soldiers off the cliff. Brees's innocence doesn't mean the monster isn't real, of course. Legia's trail leads away from the village and into the heart of a twisting, petrified forest filled with eerily lifelike statues. And snakes. So many snakes. At the heart of it all is, yep, that's a first civilization ruin, all right. Artifacts left behind by humanity's hyper-advanced precursors are always causing supernatural trouble in Assassin's Creed, meaning the writhing dread is likely something they left behind. Getting inside the temple takes a little doing, though. The key is hidden in a village of warrior women on the nearby island of Chios, and before you head over there, you might want to stop and talk to a retired mercenary who claims to have vanquished the creature before. In keeping with Odyssey's new navigation system, you'll be given a few clues to where they are, but actually finding them takes some exploration. Every step of this journey has the potential to explode into conflict. The mercenary won't reveal anything too useful or give up his Gorgon slaying spear without a fight. And the warrior women turn out to be extremely hostile to outsiders. They also shoot fire arrows that can annihilate your health in seconds even if your level is maxed out. And when you combine that with their pet wolves and bears, a stealthy approach will probably get better results than a head-on assault. On the way to either destination, you might find yourself testing your luck in the trap-filled tomb of Orpheus, or daring to investigate why a boat that sits abandoned in a bay is surrounded by blood. Oh, it's this guy. You could burn a few storehouses to destabilize the local tyrant, hunt deer in the hills, indulge in a little piracy, or cross swords with some masked creeps in a cave. The open world of Odyssey is full of cool discoveries, beautiful vistas, and secret treasures. So taking the long route can be rewarding. Also, given that this demo was with a level 50 character, we had a chance to try out high-end abilities like ghost arrows, which can go through solid objects to land perfect headshots, and how did we ever survive without them? Once it's time to venture into the heart of the mystery and confront the Queen of Snakes, you'll find a powerful foe who wants nothing more than to turn you into another statue for her collection. Keep clear of her laser-like stone gaze, and you might survive long enough to send Medusa to Hades. You can start on the path to challenging Medusa, along with just about every mercenary and villain in ancient Greece, on October 5th, when Assassin's Creed Odyssey launches on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. To find out more, subscribe to this channel and visit us at news.ubisoft.com. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, available October 5th.